All right, we're on the June 2010 exam, page 8. We're into part B. Questions that might be a little bit trickier here. Question number 36. The total work done lifting a typical high school physics textbook, a vertical distance of 0.1 meters. The formula for work is force times distance. The force in this case would be the weight, the force done against gravity, which would be mg. So we could say that the formula for work is force times distance, or mg times the height. The height is 0.1, and the acceleration due to gravity is 10. So when you multiply it, it equals 1. So the question is essentially asking what's the mass of a typical high school textbook. And is it uh, 0.15 kilograms, 1.5 kilograms, 15 or 150 kilograms? And the answer would be 1.5 kilograms. 1.5 times 10, 15 times 0 0.1, 1.5 joules. Question 37, which electrical unit is equivalent to one joule? I'll be honest, I had to think about this for a while. So let's see, uh, a joule is a unit of work energy, and so that would be uh, power times time, voltage times current times time, and it doesn't look like any of these. It would be nice if it was volts times amps, volts times amps times time, but amps is coulombs per second. So this is really the tricky one. So volts times coulombs per second, charge per second, times seconds, would be volts times coulombs, coulomb volt. So the answer is four, but that's not an easy question at all. Question 38. A small electric motor is used to lift a mass of 0.5 kilograms at a constant speed, so it's not accelerating. If the mass is lifted a vertical distance of 1.5 meters in a time of 5 seconds, the average power developed by the motor. Well, this looks like mechanical power. So I'm going to go to the mechanics equations. And I have mechanical power is work over time. Work, of course, is force times distance over time. So work is force times distance over time. And when I'm lifting something, the force has got to be the weight of the object. So work is equal to m times g times d divided by t. I've got m, I know g, I've got d, and I've got t. So I work out my numbers, and I come up with an answer. I get 1.47 which is about 1.5. Typically on these, instead of 9.8, you can substitute in 10, and that'll work. Question 39. A ball is dropped from the top of a cliff. Which graph best represents the relationship between the ball's total energy and time as the ball falls? Kind of a trick question, because the total energy of a system remains constant. So total energy, if I was going to graph this, the total energy it would have potential energy, it would lose potential, but gain kinetic, lose some more potential, gain more kinetic. And I'm looking for a graph where the total energy stays the same as a function of time. And I find that in option four. Total energy stays the same as a function of time. Question 40. A child starting from rest at the top of a playground slide reaches a speed of seven meters per second at the bottom. What is the vertical height of the slide? neglecting friction. So uh, I'm going to use the energy equation to deal with this. I'm going to say that the potential energy at the top will be equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom. Potential energy at the top is m times g times h. Kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. I can get rid of my m's and so I can say that gh is equal to one-half v squared 2gh is equal to v squared, and v squared divided by 2g is equal to h. So I'm going to use that equation. So let's see, uh, 7 squared is 49, 
49 divided by, let's say, 20 would be equal to be 2 and change, and uh, so I'm going to say that my answer is that. Well, you won't believe what I just did. Just did this whole problem, put it in, edited it, and it was the third time through checking it that I realized I did the whole problem wrong. I might include it at the end of this video just to show you the mistake I made. Anyway, question 41, the graph represents the relationship between the current of a metallic conductor and the potential difference, or the voltage across the conductor, at a constant temperature. And constant temperature implies that it's a, a constant resistance. Now, Ohm's law tells you that voltage is equal to current times resistance. Here's where I made my mistake. I wrote down the wrong formula there. Uh, so let's see. I want to compare current and, uh, and voltage. And so uh, if I say voltage divided by current, that's equal to resistance. So if I look at this graph, it's current versus potential difference, or current over voltage. And that gives us, well, basically the reciprocal of resistance but resistance is equal to voltage over current. The question is ultimately going to ask me for the resistance. So what I really want to do is get my voltage and current values from the graph, but I want to be very careful that I don't uh, pick that divided by that, which is typical of graphs. So they're, uh, they're switching these up to make the problem more difficult, and uh, I got caught. Sorry. So anyway, let's do this. Uh, I get my voltage value, so I pick a voltage value of 2 volts and a current value of 1 amp. So 2 volts divided by 1 amp uh, give me uh, 2 ohms of resistance. I can pick 3 volts and 1 and a half amps, also 2 ohms. 1 volt and half an amp, also 2 ohms. So the correct answer would be 2 ohms. You have no idea how much time I just spent fixing this problem.